Discussion keeps the world turning. This is Roundtable. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Roundtable, coming to you live from Beijing. I am He Yang, and good as always to have you with us on today's show. As the weather warms and a few public holidays approach, including the upcoming long weekend for the Duanwu Festival, also known as the Dragon Boat Festival, people are eagerly planning their vacations and preparing their itineraries. Today, we dive into the new trends in tourism, and we're on a mission of starting your week with a motivational kick. Our motivational Monday offering. We'll get you ready to tackle the week, and of course, I've handpicked a song for you to enjoy. For today's program, I'm joined by Yu Shun and Brandon Yates in the studio. First on today's show. This May 19th marks the 14th China Tourism Day, and this year's festivities span six cities and emphasize diverse themes, from food to exploration. Notable trends include the rise of art and cultural experiences, short-distance travel, small group tours, to name a few. And I'm going to go to you, Yushun. First,、mm-hmm. what hot new trends in tourism caught your eye? Oh yeah, actually, there are so many new trends recently.、Um, one is small group tours, which I think are popular because they involve fewer people and have a stronger social aspect. And also,、uh, people are not always confined to big cities like Beijing and Shanghai now. They also enjoy visiting smaller cities where there are fewer crowds. I think、mm-hmm. so. In general, it seems that people are leaning towards a more personal and refined style of traveling. Right, and there are a few trends that I、mm-hmm. know you want to get into.、Yes. But if I may say this, I don't mean to pick a bone out of your argument.、Mm-hmm. But small group tours—it doesn't sound like you know jaw-dropping, super. <laughs> You know, new thing in my、yes. opinion, but apparently、um, it has something to do with、um, you know gathering people or attracting people together in these very small groups due to interest.、I、so it, it's a it's a different way that's it's yeah, formed these days. I think it can be a little bit newish in a sense, though, because I know when I have been to various、uh, tourism destinations around Beijing,、mm. particularly with the like elderly generations, they seem to travel in massive groups. Like, How big? Hundreds of people,、about? no,、What? literally hundreds. Yeah, within one tour group, and I, I think that younger people, I, I would assume,、um, generally prefer that more like intimate、um, way of 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 tour, of touring, whether it's domestic or going around the like within their own city. I mean,、mm. or going around the country, because I think. Yeah, like you said, the social element and just having a more personalized experience, I think, is something that's appealing, particularly for young people, I guess, that are looking for something that is more、um, individualized rather、mm. than like mainstream. I think I've been to some of these small group touring things, um, um, especially for,、uh, you know, when I would like to go for some hiking activities.、Mm. We sign up for this little group, and a group of people they don't actually like re- require you to do anything, but you can just basically they they will send you they will like basically plan a bus for you to like. Basically, take you to that destination, and then you can just go、yes. freely. Yes, that's been my experience too. When I've、yes. done like tours around Beijing, you you go in like a group of fifteen, twenty people, and then、mm. when you get there, they kind of like explain what you can and can't、mm. do, or what you should see, and then they kind of let you do your own thing. But then you normally have to meet at like a certain point at a certain time.、Yes. But they do give you the freedom to kind of do your own thing. But just on hiking as well, definitely、mm. never hike alone, guys,、oh. because I've had some <laughs> terrible experiences hiking alone. It is very、mm. tempting, but safety first. It's it's good to hear. That、uh, you were hiking in a, a, a group setting. Can、yes. I just and- add one point? It's just when you got、uh, you've got the daredevils who want to go off the beaten path, and、mm. that's when things become a little bit risky sometimes.、Mm, for sure. <laughs> and okay, my gut feeling tells me that you're one of those people. Yeah, I, I, I had. I mean, I, I think I've spoken about this on a previous show, but I had a hiking experience in Cape Town where you know it was a route that I was relatively familiar with, but the weather conditions changed、oh. drastically. Very quickly, and、yeah. I was alone. And within the space of five minutes, I went from c- completely clear conditions to not being able to see, like two meters in front of me. So I had to stop hiking and then, you know, wait for a rescue、Whoa. team to come and find me. And I was stuck on this mountain for like ten hours. That's so scary. Yeah, 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 it was. But I mean, the rescue team did a great job. But it was just an example of how, particularly when you're out in nature, things、mm. can change very quickly. And if you're alone, you can be. 
you can find yourself in a very tricky situation. So that's why people sometimes sign up in groups and、mm-hmm. go to new places when they travel,、yes. and also big or small. That's all relative. You guys mentioned the tour group that. Consists of like fifteen or twenty people. Is that、mm. considered small for today's measurement? I'd say so compared、yeah. to what I've seen. Yeah. Oh really? Well, I've been to even smaller groups. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah. Then how was that experience of even fewer people gathering together? To yeah. To I mean,、then? this might defy my general impression, but、mm. I'm not a people's person <laughs> when I'm off the show. Okay. I, I'm enjoy my own space, but also.、Mm. Um, I value safety when、mm. going to, especially. It's a fine line. Yeah. Yeah, because obviously you want to do certain things alone, and you want to be autonomous in terms of what you decide to do when you're,、yeah. you know, in your free time, and you've spent money on a tour or an overseas trip. But you also have to be aware of safety, particularly if you're in a like us, like I've said, an, an outdoor setting or、right. a, a setting where you're at, you know, the mercy of the elements. Yeah. Or, or if you're in a new country or a new city,、um, that's definitely something to be aware of. Right, and also. I am a younger millennial, and I suppose in our generation,、uh, okay, let's not. I shouldn't be representing anybody but myself. Let's just say I've always felt that I don't enjoy being just a face in the crowd.、Mm, It's、either. my、mm. life. <laughs> yeah, and not quoting、uh, Bon Jovi intentionally, <laughs> but that's coming up. Yeah, yeah, yeah.、Sure. <laughs> <laughs> and therefore, I've always liked the smaller groups. Also, just think about this: when you're traveling with a whole bunch of strangers, some、mm. of them are going to be late. Some of them、mm. are going、yes. to have bad breath. Some of them are going <laughs> to be too chatty or whatnot. So, just to avoid all of those things,、um, traveling in a smaller group, I think, has its obvious benefits. But you can also find that in a small group, though, because if there's only like five or ten of you, then the chatty one's gonna, you know, you've got,、uh, you've got a, a A greater chance of being、yeah. linked to the chatty one, whereas it's a, a group of a hundred. You can say,、oh, "I'm going to go talk to my friend like twenty rows down." <laughs> if you want to, <laughs> if you want to avoid the chatty person, you know. So it's like it, there's there's pros and cons, I suppose. Yeah, and、uh, I think these days with the different platforms that are utilized via your smartphone these days,、mm. it's just so much easier to find at least someone to go traveling with, whether you want it to be some an acquaintance you know or complete strangers. And I suppose. That aspect of being able to link with strangers,、mm. meeting new people, is what、uh, is is what contributes to the social aspect that、mm. Yushun you、yes. were talking about.、Yeah. So, are you saying that young people these days are kind of depending on this as a gateway into meeting new people? I think so <laughs> because、uh, you know, first of all, they provide these kind of、um, you know、um, highly Personalized kind of experience because you get there and you can because during the trip, right? There, there's there are not going to be a, a a guide guiding you to what kind of a spot because you go there and you can just go travel with anybody that you would like to go with. So that is the period that you can get socializing with、mm. people. There can and, be though, like I think in some of those experiences, you can kind of follow the guide, like you can、mm. ask the guide to take you to certain places or whatever. But there is definitely the option、mm. of arriving at a venue. Yeah, so it's getting highly customized. Doing, yeah, and you can do your own thing. So there's there's、mm. options, which I think is something that people appreciate in these、uh, smaller groups. Yes,、mm. and I saw some people say that this kind of also a opportunity for blind box socialization. I think we. Talked about it before. Well, explain to people because <laughs> blind box is not something if you do not understand the Chinese context would、mm. get. So,、uh, blind box is basically you don't know what's inside the box. So, basically, when you go the, to these kind of travel groups, you you don't know what kind of people you will encounter.、Mm-hmm. So、then, then you can get kind of a socialization in a blind box that you can meet different people blindly, maybe.、Mm-hmm. So,、um, after you know. I, I saw somebody saying that online. After breaking the ice, they quickly bonded, and along the way, they share life and emotional stories. They can share their happiness, sadness, confusion, and had endless conversations. Yeah, I think that, that is、like、a great chance. That sounds like a nightmare to me. <laughs> <laughs> for me personally, I can't imagine anything worse. Like when I'm on holiday, if I want to go see a specific location or experience something new, I don't want to hear about somebody else's life problems, life story. Like, no, sit next to me, keep quiet, let's enjoy this experience together. But no, I don't want to learn everything about you. That's, yeah, that's my personal take. What about if this person just started? 
to strike a conversation about this temple you see right That's in front of you. That's acceptable, but okay. if you start talking about your kids and your job and you know your mental struggles, I'm not interested, mate. <laughs> well, usually it's you know let's see how the conversation flows because it's not. <laughs> of course, like... when you're bonded, then you can have that kind of fun conversation. Yeah, yeah. But, but I must but... say, like also, I think in some instances, I've done most of my travels solo, which I love. But I think that some of those experiences may have been enhanced. Um, if I was with, um, you know, either a close acquaintance or somebody new that I met and then mm. got along with, so I think there are definitely pros and cons to, um, you know, different types of tourism. But I can definitely see some of the pros in, um, you know, the small group experiences that we've been discussing. Yeah,、mm. and also people apparently are now favoring some of the less popular spots,、right. and then they like to. In a way, show off that I've been to this place that none of you have heard of. I love to do that, <laughs> as opposed to the traditional、uh, tourism、mm. hotspots. So they are kind of interested in these kind of niche attractions and authentic local cuisine, so that basically you don't need to go to these kind of hot spot and popular tourist.、Um, Destinations, but you can go to these small lanes、mm-hmm. that where, where lo- only local people will go have breakfast、mm-hmm. or something like that, and then so these tourist hotspots like Chongqing, Shanghai, and Beijing, although they remain bustling, hotel booking demand in dozens of smaller cities in China has more than doubled year on year. So some small cities in northeast and western regions have seen. Booking demand increases of over 100% year on year, indicating a growing interest among tourists in these kind of non-traditional tourist destinations. I had relatively similar experiences in my own city, where, it, but it was a little bit different though. Like I only wanted to explore the niche areas once I'd already been to the touristy areas. So, for example,、mm. my mom. Loves to climb Lion's Head, which is a massive tourist popular、uh, mm. destination in Cape Town, and she's done it like five, six, seven times. Whereas I'm the type of person that would love to do one thing once.、Mm. That's very popular. And then instead of doing that same thing multiple times, I would like to go and find new、yeah. things. So I've been、yeah. to multiple venues all across my city because there are so many. Um, and it just requires a little bit of research to find something new and something niche. But that being said, I didn't avoid the popular spots. I just moved on to niche spots、um, once I'd been to those popular spots. And I think that's also something that locals, if they're wanting to explore their own city,、mm. can look at, as opposed to going to, you know, very popular、mm. destinations multiple times. Do some research and find out what else you can see in your city, because I'm sure in Beijing, for example, there are thousands、mm. of sites that you can see、so、that、places. you probably weren't even aware of. Yes, and also maybe this reflects a little bit of a change in the tourist mentality, in the sense that now we're talking about people who are traveling, and you know they could be millennials or Gen、mm. Z, and and they're kind of different from their parents' generation. Because、mm. in the past, or let's say like thirty years ago, I remember when my family or like extended family traveled overseas for the first time. It was、yeah. often to Singmatai, so、oh. Singapore, Malaysia. And Thailand,、mm. and back then it was all about. Okay, this was years ago. All right, so people, so yeah, I remember my auntie was like, "I'm putting on my nicest clothes, and this is a brand new chunky big camera by today's standards, and I'm taking that with me, and I'm taking enough cash with me as well, and I'm just gonna be、um, flush on my trip." For like a week, yeah, and <laughs> and because <laughs> 穷家富路 it's like when you're out traveling, then you want to be financially prepared. Yeah, because、mm-hmm. it's a once in a lifetime experience too, so you want to make the most of it. Yeah, and when you、yeah. come home, it's like oh,、Back、regular, normal,、yeah. <laughs> uh, laid back lifestyle or whatever it is. Anyway, so when they went, another、um, hallmark of I suppose first generation travelers was you hit all the landmark. Iconic spa-、uh, spots,、mm. and then it's like if you go to Paris, you have to take a picture in front of the Eiffel Tower,、mm. and if you go to Singapore, you have to take that picture in front of the 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 lion the lion, the lion fountain thing.、Mm. I'm sorry, Singaporeans, I don't know the name of it, but you get what you, what what you, what I mean, and I, I I love that spot. So now what you see is like 
this generation or younger travelers, they have a different idea about traveling. Now it's like, okay, it could be a really laid back thing. I could be enjoying the day at the spa in the mm. hotel or mm. going to these obscure little places that might just be a coffee shop or yes. a nice little local place that's not going to make news. But I'm enjoying my time here. This is heavily trending on social media. So you'll get people that are going to the, you know these world-renowned cities like Paris, London, Rome. And the only pictures you are seeing are, you know, random streets or them at like some cute little cafe. I'm pretty sure they went to, you know, like the Trevi Fountain and they went to, you know, um, the Eiffel Tower, etc. But to keep up with the whole cool, trendy, mm. you know, I'm just in a new city vibe, not mm -hmm. going to the touristy spots. They'll only post pictures <laughs> where they're at like random spots that yeah. no one even knows what city they're in. Yeah. But I guarantee mm. you those kids still went to all of the touristy yeah. spots and took pictures but just didn't post them. Yes, I would say more people are in the sense of discovering more places because mm. of course they still go to these kind of famous spots when you're going to Paris of course going to take a picture with Have to. the Eiffel Tower but they can they are also on the side of discovering more interesting places that they would like to enjoy their own like lifestyle or something mm -hmm. because they can actually of course that's also a way of express themselves because it is also reflecting that Okay, I am enjoying my life in the way of really chill and uh, you know go down the you know empty street or and enjoy to show the their views. friends how cool they are. Mm, yes. <laughs> yeah. It's a bit Look of both. At me. Yeah, <laughs> but the thing is, on the one hand, you've got this um, sort of like a hidden message that is. Well, not all that hidden. That is screaming that, look at me. I'm individualistic, idiosyncratic, that I have my own unique taste and I mm. go to this place. But on the other hand, just look at Xiao Hongshu, uh, aka media Red, or Instagram. You've got this whole swath of other like photos clearly showing that people... They go to the exact same spot, use the exact same filter, mm. and take exactly the same picture. Mm. And nowadays, it's so interchangeable. You can just use AI to like put yourself <laughs> into the the picture, and then you know you get a million copies. Anyway, so on the other yeah. hand, you also get like these these like mass produced social media friendly photos of people going to exactly the same spot in the strange new city that you go to i think it's good to have a little bit of a combination of both so i think before you go on a trip you should definitely identify one or two or three historic you know world famous sites that you definitely have to see and cannot miss if you visit a certain city or a certain country but i also think it's good to make the time to just go out and explore a city and have a day that was not necessarily planned and just live in the moment. Mm -hmm. And I think it is definitely possible to do both with a little bit of planning um, in terms of seeing certain things before you go on your trip. But mm -hmm. it's also definitely possible to make the time to just walk out of your hotel or your accommodation or whatever and just walk around and have a completely unplanned, unscheduled day. And I think that's also a worthwhile experience up there with, you know, seeing you know, these historical sites. And it is definitely possible to do both on a trip. Mm -hmm. mm, absolutely. I saw actually some hashtags, very popular hashtags, that telling people that, oh, a lot of people are so tired of planning their um, like trips. Mm -hmm. And then we can actually enjoy some, you know, random trips that you can just, you know, send a pin on the map and then you go there and, mm. and see what is going on and see what is going to be there. So um, I think that is also, not, you know, now nowadays people, they are feeling that, okay, the trip are for enjoying their, your, like, their, your life. Yeah, traveling on a whim. That I, is my ultimate dream. Yeah, and I often find that when people come back from trips, even if it's a city that has a thousand historical sites, normally the stories that they tell are moments that happened that were unplanned. Mm. So I think that making time for that mm. possibility is very important. Yes, go and see, you know, the Louvre and the Eiffel Tower when you're in Paris, but also make the time to walk around and just experience the city and see and experience what locals do. Yeah. And I think you'll come back with a, com a variety of stories um, you know, that you can ch cherish for many years. Mm -hmm. And another trend that we found out is that uh, this has been alluded to on a previous show a couple of days ago mm. about museums and art experiences yes. are apparently what's drawing people to their travel mm. destinations too. Yeah, so there is also a growing trend of these kind of 
cultural tourism focused on museums and historical sites, and、um, the average popularity of you know music festivals across the country has increased by over ninety percent, and museums and other cultural attractions have also become popular destinations. We can see one is that in Hubei Province, the Hubei Provincial Museum experienced a significant increase in popularity due to the exhibition of new cultural relics. I I saw that's a kind of a new, newly or unearthed from a tomb,、mm -hmm. um, you know. So it is for the first time, and a lot of people just go for this、um, specific tomb to、mm. sightseeing, and、um, that is it was so popular and became the museum with the fastest increase in popularity on Ma Feng Wo, which is a trip.、Uh, I think it's equivalent to a trip advisor, and followed closely by. The Shanxi History Museum and San Xingdui Museum, both of which experienced popularity increases of over three hundred percent. Right, and on top of that, there is a growing penchant of travelers who favor the so-called DIY, DIY do-it-yourself、mm. traveling style, or basically independent trips, I suppose. And then you know, you you design your route yourself, and it does sound like a lot of work. And that's why some people, you know, want to give free. Is this before trip or? During a trip, before, before trip. Okay,、yeah. that's how I plan my trips.、I、so never... you do plan your trips? Yeah. So yeah, I mean, <laughs> to a certain extent. So obviously the accommodation and the flights, and you know, I normally research places to like get food or where the good nightlife is and what、mm. you know certain sites、um, I want to see or whether you know the nice beaches are, etc., etc.、Mm. So there is definitely a significant amount of planning that happens, and I think also as a South African, our passports are quite limited, so a lot needs to be done in terms of visas and that kind of thing as well. So if、yes. you're, if you're, yeah. So if you're, so, a, so、yeah. you're the kind of person who will plan everything before your trip, and I, because not, not day are... to day, but like things that I want to see、mm. and do throughout the trip.、Yeah. But it's definitely not planned on a on a day to day schedule style.、Yes. But I definitely have like a hit list, for example,、mm. because there are some kind of people that they just they. Because we know that planning is actually a quite frustrating thing to、For、do. It's very time-consuming. Yeah. <laughs> yes, and so these. People will go to just only for the kind of group tour、yeah. and then carefree and go to there and、you、just pay up. Yeah, and follow. Yeah, but, the, but then it's also the, 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 my issue with that personally is that then it becomes like very your experience is kind of taken out of your hands because if you、mm. go on those group experiences, you kind of are told what to do at certain、mm. times and what you want to see on certain days. And if you're not feeling well on a certain day, you still have to kind of have to go along with the group.、Yeah. So that、yes. kind of travel has never really appealed to me. So for me personally, I'm willing to put in the work before the trip、um, and then have my like individual experience as opposed to going on these group trips. But that being said, there is definitely a lot of convenience in going on these group trips、mm. because, like you said, you can kind of just arrive and you know go along for the ride. Yeah, and that's why I think.、Uh, Another form is quite popular. Is that you basically DIY most of your trips during your vacation, and then you sign up for some small group tours、mm -hmm. so that you can combine these two things、yes. to、yeah. to、so、balance the efficiency and freedom. I've done that in recent trips where I arrive and then I kind of don't plan the first two days and kind of see what's going on. But when I'm there, I will seek out you know、uh, local、yeah. tour groups agencies. and a, exactly agencies.、Yeah. And then there's normally like inclusive packages where you can see. Four or five different destinations、mm. in one day, and and、yes. that's very appealing to me. Yeah, that's really good. And also, some of these,、uh, a lot of these tour groups or tour agencies, they have revamped their、um, mm. way of doing business as well, in the sense of making these、uh, tour groups a little bit more flexible, like you guys、yes. kind of mentioned. I think so.、Mm. Like maybe they have like a couple of days that are. You're off free, do whatever you do days, and then there are other days when they take you to the main tour spots. That、uh, if you didn't go, it's almost like you have never arrived. Yeah,、so. but then you also get these like one day tour groups that you can、yeah. kind of book when you arrive at the destination,、mm. which is also quite、uh, quite a nice experience. Yes, and we've. Also, seen another one last trend. We'll name it for you.、Mm. That is apparently called、uh, stamp collection. Yes, and it's it's not the kind of stamp that you stick on postage, but it is the stamp that you get in、uh, sort of in your inked. Passport. Yeah, you just yeah. collect it. It's in for inked in a notebook. Yeah.、Mm. So, what's that about?、Uh, so, after you arrive at a place, you will go get a stamp. So, this stamp is usually available at a local cultural and creative store or a museum,、mm -hmm. and features elements that you know 
represent this local area so that people will like to collect it and uh, as a representation yeah. of they went to this place. Right. I collect mugs personally. I love doing <laughs> that. And my mom likes to get fridge magnets from me when I go to a uh, new yes. country. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's a favorite for a lot of people. Mm. And, and I think this is a good way to actually, you know, memorize all of the place that mm, you mm. went. Yeah, definitely. I think it's part of human nature that we want to create a tangible record of one's travels and collect mementos. You know, that's always nice to be reminded that, yes, I've been there before 